Have you ever looked up to the sky at night and wondered, what's out there? Are we really all alone? These are questions I've always dwelled on since I was little, looking up from my grandparents' garden at the beautiful Milky Way. From the earliest civilizations, the night sky served as a navigational tool, a seasonal calendar, and a source of mythology. Ancient Egyptians aligned their pyramids with stars like Sirius, while the Greeks wove tales of gods and heroes into their constellations. The Polynesians navigated vast oceans by reading the stars, a testament to the sky's role in human exploration and survival. Each culture has seen different patterns and stories in the stars, yet all share a common awe for the nocturnal heavens. I remember one late autumn night in my childhood, spent at my grandparents' house, which sat on the edge of a forest, deep in the mountains, far from city lights. The sky was so clear that it felt like I could reach out and touch the stars. My father, a geologist like myself, pointed out constellations, telling stories of Orion the Hunter and the Seven Sisters of the Pleiades. He showed me how to find the North Star using the Big Dipper, a moment that felt like a rite of passage into understanding our place among the stars. That night lying on the cold porch, I felt an overwhelming sense of peace, connected to both the past and the infinite future, under the same sky that had watched over countless generations before me. I have marveled for years since at our cosmos, and in 2024, I took a leap into astrophotography and astronomy, educating myself on the wonders of the universe and how to capture the magnificent objects in our night sky. Using a fairly inexpensive telescope, the Seastar S50 made by ZWO, I was able to see far beyond what was possible with the naked eye. And that got me wondering the past few days, how many objects can you actually see in a fairly normal city setting, where light pollution affects the quality of images you can take? Here is a picture taken with an iPhone 16 Pro. In darker areas, you would be able to even make out the cosmic fabric of the Milky Way but this looks like any ordinary city setting with parts of the Orion constellation in sight, the Pleiades and the Auriga constellation as well. Using plate solving, we can reference the image with astronomical coordinates, right ascension and declination. I'm using a free tool from astronometry.net, which will give you a referenced dot fit file that can be used further in different softwares like PixInsight. PixInsight is by far one of the most powerful softwares available for any astrophotographer. I loaded up the .fit file and using the annotation script available, I ended up with this staggering chart with the identified objects in the previous unassuming picture. Hundreds of stars, deep sky objects from the Messier, IC and NGC catalogues. But what if we look closer at one specific area in this picture using the Sea Star S50? How deep can we look into the fabric of space and time? I set my sights on the constellation Aurigae, especially on the main star here, A.E. Aurigae, which is a remarkable object known for its significant influence on its celestial surroundings. This hot blue main sequence star is roughly 1,320 to 1,500 light years away from Earth and shines with an apparent magnitude varying between 5.78 and 6.08, making it visible to the naked eye under optimal conditions. AE Aurigae is classified as an Orion variable, showing irregular brightness fluctuations due to its youth and intense energy output. It is most famous for illuminating the flaming star nebula, not because it was born there, but because it's currently passing through this unrelated cloud of gas and dust, causing it to glow with a combination of emission and reflection from A.E. Aurigae's powerful ultraviolet radiation. Interestingly, A.E. Aurigae is a runaway star, believed to have been ejected from the Orion Nebula some 2.5 to 3 million years ago, following a dynamical interaction, perhaps a collision, with another star system in the trapezium cluster. Inside the Sea Star app, I use the Sky Atlas feature to look up for the celestial objects I'm interested in. For this specific case, I'll be searching for IC405, 
which is the Flaming Star Nebula. The app will then show you the best viewing times for the object with the apparent altitude in the night sky. Another important step is setting up the frame of the photograph. Here, I use the mosaic feature and adjust the angle as well so I can get as much of the nebula in the shot as possible. With astrophotography, time is the essence of a good result. The more data you can acquire, the better the overall signal output will be and finer details will start showing up in your photograph. Roughly six hours later, the telescope managed to get around 900 frames in total, which it stitched together automatically in a mosaic frame. The long time is due to the telescope being an altitude azimuth design, and with celestial objects rotating as they cross their zenith point, the more work the telescope and the software have to do to be able to piece together the image. Here is the final result after processing the stacked dot fit file from the C star. Hope you enjoyed my video and consider liking and subscribing to my channel so we can explore together the wonders of the universe. Thank you.